morning on the road today hey, hey. The sun is blazing on a one Hi everyone, this is Vampers Kiss and this is another installment of Vampy Raw and Uncensored. Today we're going to talk about, it's a serious subject, it's um, about compulsive gambling. Now, n some of you know that I'm a compulsive gambler and some of you don't, obviously. But I'm going to tell uh, my tale of how I fell into it and how I was able to dig myself up out of the pit that um, consumed my life to the point where we almost lost everything. Anyway, it was, uh, the year was 1994. I tried to get this right, I'm not very good with dates. And um, I had just come out of a relationship with the, uh, I would call him the love of my life. He was my high school sweetheart and um, we got back together when we were about 35 years old. And I never, I never knew love or understood love until I was with him when I was older. And so when he left me, it absolutely devastated me. And it was like something blew a hole inside my heart, literally. I mean, there was this literal hole and it was like nothing could fill it. I mean, it was awful. I mean, sometime I might confess the other things I did during this time, but we're just going to talk about the gambling right now. Anyway, I was at this place. It's called the Maverick. It's a, a, a little coffee shop and a bar. It's in Portland, Oregon. And I was there with... Uh, some friends of mine and they had always you know Oregon had uh legalized gambling and so I, I'm not sure if it was per establishment or if it was like uh like how big the establishment was but most gambling places up there to the best of my recollection had six slot machines but all they played was um i'll get it just give me a second oh video poker because there were video poker machines so excuse me anyway um a friend of mine um said come here let's try this and I, um, we put some money in it and it's not that I won. It's just like, while I was playing it, cause we were playing like we'd win a hand. And then when you were done with the hand, you had a choice about a uh, high, low card. And you know, you could bet, you know, is the card going to be high or is the card going to be low? At least this is the way I remembered. I mean, this is a long time ago and, um, you know, I don't think I played it for very long. It was maybe about an hour or something. But during that hour, because I was so consumed by what was going on right in front of me on the machine, I had forgotten about, you know, Gary and everything that was going on in my life. And, um, you know, I was vulnerable. And it was, you know, to be honest with you, I remember that first night and then like that. I was like addicted. I don't I don't know how else to put it. I don't remember a slow slide into it. I just remember it happened that fast. And I used to go over to the Maverick and I would take my kids. I mean, God, I was I was really I was in bad shape back then. And um they would get biscuits and gravy and I would go into the bar and I would gamble. And um you know, that was one of the places we'd go. And there there was like, I only remember, to be, to be totally honest, two places I ever really went. It was there in a deli. Um, I mean, sometimes I went to some other places, but, you know, I always made sure I went someplace where, you know, the kids could sit and wait for me. And sometimes those poor kids waited, you know, six, 12 hours. It just, you know, it was terrible what I did to them. And because uh, Jamie was like, 
Well, I know Angel, not Angel, wrong kid. Uh, Casey was like five, so Jamie was about 15. And um, they they told on me, they told my mother what I was doing, and my mother got really mad at me, and I got into a buttload of trouble. But you know, it, it doesn't matter what happens in your life. Once you're a compulsive gambler and you haven't come to terms with being a compulsive gambler, you, it doesn't do any good. I mean, you have to make the decision for yourself that you're at a point where you need to take care of it. And, um, I mean, it got bad. I used to have two checking accounts and, um, one was at one bank and one was at another bank. And I used to do this thing where I would overdraw on one account, but back then in, you know, 94, they didn't have the, you know, fast internet like they do now and all the bells and whistles. So the check would actually have to go from the one bank to the other bank to get cashed and then, you know, paid. So I had it figured out that it took two days writing a check on either one of the banks. And what I would do is I would write checks that I couldn't back up. And I actually did not know that that was illegal and it's called floating. <laughs> I didn't know it. I thought, I, I just, I did not know it. I was that naive. And that's what I used to do. I'd float money all, all month long. And you know, to be utterly honest with you, I cannot remember how at the end of, end of the month I would reconcile it. That, that there, it, I just don't remember because some of it's kind of hazy and fuzzy, but, um, I, I would do that, you know, and so I'd be gambling money that wasn't really money at all. It was just air because I couldn't back it up. But at one point I went to, um, GA, which is Gamblers Anonymous. And I remember, um, I went to a few meetings and I remember it being, a very crowded room lots of people and you know everybody would tell their stories and stuff and I uh, I don't know I just I either wasn't ready to be there or just wasn't where I needed to be at that time I'm not sure but it just did not strike a chord with me but I do remember getting the book and it's a red book that's got the logo and it says GA on the top of it or in the middle of it, I guess. And there's a list of 10 things that if you have more than two of these things, you are a compulsive gambler. Might even be more than one of the things. I can't remember because um, my book's packed away someplace. But I remember reading the list of 10 things. And on that list of 10 things, I had done all 10 things. I had... Uh, I mean, I was like way over the edge. And uh, I remember, like I said, I didn't go for very long. And I cannot remember. I asked Jamie the other day if she remembered what year it was. Because I did quit gambling up in Oregon. But from 94 to, two, to 1999... That was when I came down here to New Mexico. So I must have not gambled for very long. And I must have not been in recovery for very long before I came down here to New Mexico. That's all I, I can basically remember. And when my, I was, you know, I did fine, even though we had casinos all around us, because, you know, the tribes here have casinos. Um, my mother moved down here and after my father passed away and my mother wanted to go gambling and we went to the Santa Ana Star Casino and I was doing okay watching her gamble you know but she was so slow I knew we were going to be there like all night long and I said here let me push the button for you well don't touch the machine don't put money in the machine just don't because that's all it took. Because it, even though I didn't put the money in the machine, all I did was touch the machine right down that path again. And I became 
well, I didn't become, I still was a compulsive gambler. Once you're a compulsive gambler, you're always a compulsive gambler, whether you're gambling or not. Um, and that started me on my second wave, which I can tell you this, the second wave was worse than the first. Much worse, because I had access to much more money than I did the first time around. So I was, I, I was gambling a lot. And um, I'm going to just chug it on forward here that it was um, 2009. I gambled till 2009. And, you know, I, this here again is kind of fuzzy and hazy for me. Uh, I got mad. Casey says I got mad because I, he wouldn't set up my phone that I had gotten in the mail. A cell phone. And, um... Or he was mad because my cell phone was better than his. It was something like that. You know, it's like an alcoholic. They'll pick a fight just to get out of the house and go do what they want to do. Well, a compulsive gambler is no different. Anyway, uh, I left. It was actually Christmas Day, 2019. Two th wrong year, 2009. And I went down to the casino and I spent like all day long at the casino gambling. And I'm not, well... One thing that did happen when I was down there, that, well, actually, this was the last hand I played. And, of course, these are real uh, casino machines that are down here. And my favorite casino machine was called Winning Circle. It had horses on it. And um, I was playing it, and I was in a bonus. At least I think I was in a bonus. Anyway, I won, like, almost three grand. And I decided to come home on the high note. And I did. I came home. And I cannot remember why or what changed. I do remember thinking if I don't quit gambling, we are not going to have a home. We're not going to have a house. We're not going to have anything. Because I had gambled away most of the money. And it was... Uh, it was it was a bad situation. Of course, nobody knew it was a bad situation because that's the one thing about gambling. That's why it is absolutely the worst addiction there is. I mean, you can't drink for 12 hours straight because if you do, you're going to pass out or die from alcohol poisoning. You can't really do drugs for 12 hours straight, but you could gamble for 12 hours straight easy. I mean, the only thing that, you know, keeps you from stopping gambling is if you run out of money. Well, if you're a pretty crafty person, you, you don't run out of money. And that's why gambling is one of the hardest things to overcome. Because it is. I mean, you can steal, you can sell, you can do all sorts of things. And, it, you know, keep getting money. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's bad news all the way around. Anyway, I came home that, you know, and of course, Jamie gave me crap for missing angels. I think it was first Christmas or maybe second Christmas. I can't remember what year, what Christmas it was. Anyway, um, I, uh, like I said, we were about to lose everything. And I just decided, you know, instead of going back and losing, I would quit on a high note. So that was exactly what I did. And I just did not go back. I did not go back to GA, but I did not go back to the casino either. And over time, as, the, as time progressed, sometimes we would go down and we'd have a buffet, you know, because that's where it was, was at the casino. I was okay. And... Um, I, I, I did okay with it. I didn't do, um, I didn't slip back. And God, I'm trying to remember what year it was Casey and I went to Vegas. 2013, I think. 2013. And uh, no issues. I went to Vegas 2013, 2014, and then we in 2018. No, no, no issues at all. Now, Casey gambled in 2013, but uh, you didn't do any gambling, did you, Jamie? No, no I didn't I think. Yeah. 
And uh, I, one thing I do like to do, and I won't lie, I like, if somebody wins a jackpot, you know, I'm excited for them and I like to see what's going on. But you know, in the three times I was in Vegas, there was only the last time in 2018 I ever seen anybody win a jackpot. And we had Angel with us and it was a big, uh, you know, let down because I couldn't stand there anyway because the kid was with us. And so I didn't get to see how much the person had won. But they had won back to back jackpots on two different machines that was at the Flamingo, which I thought was pretty cool. Anyway, but other than that, I have not um, touched a machine, put money in a machine. I just don't do it. But I don't have the urge anymore either. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It was like everything was just in alignment for me to quit gambling in 2009. I mean, not 2000. Yeah, that's right, 2009. And I was really lucky that I was able to overcome it on my own. I don't remember really going through any bad withdrawals from it. I just made up my mind and I just quit. I mean, I probably did have problems, but I just have blocked them out, I guess. But I'm grateful that, you know, I was, you know, I'm able to actually walk through a casino and not feel like I need to, uh, you know, put money in a machine because that would be awful if I had that sort of monkey on my back. But, um, you know, as of December of last year, 2019, I had 10 years under my belt. And, you know, a lot of people probably think, well, I'm free and clear now. I don't at all ever take it for granted, ever. I know that I cannot, will not, should not, do not ever tempt fate because I just don't want to. I mean, from being a compulsive gambler to being a, um, well, what I am now, which is, you know, once you're obsessive and compulsive, you usually are always obsessive and compulsive. And um, I, I started saving money. Instead of gambling it, I started saving it. And to be utterly honest, in the 10 years that I have quit gambling, we actually now today have more cash than we had at any time I ever started gambling. I mean, that was I was able to turn it around that much. And of course, yes, there's part of me that thinks about, well, if you never gambled, you idiot, you would have twice as much as that. You know, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. Because um, I don't know if the obsessive compulsive part of about wanting to save money would have been there. I don't know, you know, you, you, you can't take and go, hmm. So that's the way my life would have been. You can't, you know, we don't have that luxury. But um, that, that there is pretty much the story of my um, addiction with gambling. And yes, um, my name is Kim, and I am a compulsive gambler. I will be till the day I die. But, um, you know, if any of you are having issues with gambling, I'm going to put a link to Gamblers Anonymous in the, uh, down below for you. And, um, you know, that might be the way you need to go, and it might not be. Not everything is set up in that way. Some people need support and some people like myself, I, I didn't need that sort of support. Something, something else was guiding me at that time. I don't exactly know what it was. I was, I just know I was damn lucky, really lucky. And, um, gambling affects everyone in the family. I mean, it really does. It, 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 it doesn't matter because Jamie used to tell me she would call the casino in the middle of the night to see if I was down there because I would stay all night at the casino because they'd be open like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all night long. And sometimes I would stay there all night and that's all I'd be doing is gambling. You know, what a waste. I can say that now, but you know, at the time that you're knees deep in it, you don't see it as a waste and it's, uh, I don't know, but you know, I can say this, 
that by 2009, when I was able to give it up, that hole that was in my heart was no longer in my heart. So that maybe is the reason why I was able to quit. I don't, I don't know. Only who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows. <laughs> I know I don't know, but I'm uh, grateful that I'm not doing it today. And I hope that this will inspire other people to at least, I mean, the first step is admitting you're, you've got a problem. I mean, it's alcoholism, drugs, whatever the problem is. The first step is admitting you have a problem. And then after you admit you have the problem, then you can do something about it. Choose to do something about it. Because um, an intervention won't work if you're not ready. So anyway, I want to close out this uh, vampy raw with a little bit of my good friend Jimmy Hook. This is a song called Wolfman of Ireland. And he... Uh, I think I heard him say once he wrote it because of the song that uh, uh, oh, The Wolfman of London or God, I knew the name of it before I started the video. Now I forget. The one that Warren Zevon does. I think that's the guy's name. I try. So anyway, Everybody, remember, we're still in the middle of the COVID thing. Remember to mask it or cask it and uh, just take care of each other. And remember, always one soul. Enjoy. Remember, Jimmy Hook, Reverb Nation, The Hook. Peace out. So if you go out into the woods today, hey, hey.